Since the inception of the first internal combustion petroleum-fueled motorcycle, humanity has been in constant competition to try and build the fastest crotch rocket in human existence. Now this war has raged on for over a century and all sorts of different brands pour a ton of resources, research, development into building the fastest bike they possibly can. But in 1999, that all came to an end when Suzuki unveiled the fastest production motorcycle to ever scratch the surface of the earth. An engine that can get you to almost 200 miles an hour out of the shoulder has a range and an ability to go around corners that's unparalleled. It is in one single motorcycle, I suppose the epitome of high-tech motorcycle engineering. The bike is known as the Hayabusa, and it broke the previous speed record by insurmountable margins. Unlike the other fast sports bikes we've seen in the past, this motorcycle was different. It was well-rounded, extremely powerful, and comically unattractive. Good looking and fast. Instant hit. But the most impressive thing about this bike is it was and still remains one of the fastest bikes you can get your hands on today. Despite being a 22 year old design, the Hayabusa still holds up to modern motorcycles. How has Suzuki's Hayabusa remained on top for so long? Is it really that amazing of a bike? And what happened to this century long battle for speed? Let's get right into it. The name Hayabusa comes from the Japanese Peregrine Falcon, which is a bird that can dive at speeds of up to 390 kilometers an hour and likes to prey on small birds like blackbirds, which is coincidentally the name of the Honda which previously held the fastest title, the Honda Super Blackbird. How fast did it go? 287 kilometers an hour. But Suzuki had wiped the floor with Honda by creating what I consider to be the pinnacle of crotch rocket magic. When Suzuki unveiled their uh, Gixxer 1300 in April of 1999, the world was speechless. Uh, and it's because the motorcycle was hideous. No matter which angle you looked from, the Hayabusa was plumpy, confusing, and bizarre looking. People were willing to overlook that because the motorcycle was insanely quick. The Hayabusa did 306 kilometers an hour, which at the time was the fastest speed a production motorcycle had ever gone. You've seen uh, Star Trek where they go in the warp drive, that's what it's like. But exactly how did Suzuki make this motorcycle so fast? Suzuki had done what no other manufacturer had done. They put the beefiest, juiciest, prime grade engine ever seen on a sports bike. It was a 1,298cc motor, a revamped version of their twin cam 16 valve unit from Suzuki's Gixxer 1100. The new unit had reshaped valves, a larger combustion chamber, gear-driven counterbalancers to aid stability. And what's great is this engine delivered instant, strong acceleration through the rev range and powered through the wind like it was a guided missile. And given the rider could keep the nose on the ground, the bike could reach 100 kilometers an hour in under three seconds. And while this is very, very impressive for its time, the motor is only half the story. The other part of the story are the looks of the motorcycle. Yes, in the sunlight, the Hayabusa looks like a rotten banana peel. But you know what's cool about banana peels? They're goddamn slippery. The Hayabusa is ugly because it didn't spend its time being ridiculed and body shamed by designers. It spent its formative years in wind tunnels being sculpted by science. The Hayabusa is one of the most aerodynamic motorcycles out there. The one thing you should know about motorcycles is they fucking hate science. So when it comes to motorcycle drag, most bike manufacturers don't really care because it's pretty much a lost cause on motorcycles. And that's because motorcycles aren't the issue. It's the big, fat, unaerodynamic human being sitting on top of it. But Suzuki actually spent a lot of time making their bike very aerodynamic. They shaped the bike like a bullet. They added massive side bolsterings to prevent your unaerodynamic knees from causing drag. And they installed a ram in system to force cool air into the engine via these fairing slots. And this helped Hayabusa produce a record breaking 173 brake horsepower. But what if I told you that Hayabusa isn't only known for its speed? 
What if I told you that that motorcycle did all the other things really, really well? The Hayabusa can actually be a remarkably docile road bike for everyday riding. Despite being technically a crotch rocket, the Hayabusa is versatile and it's easy to ride. Weighing in at 215 kilograms, it was reasonably light, comfortable, and roomy. Despite having steering dampers to aid stability, the steering was effortless and precise. Front and rear suspension were flawless yet the frame was rigid. The Hayabusa was an all-around balanced bike, almost beginner friendly. What? But unfortunately, despite all its glory, all of its speed and its practicality, some people actually wanted to cancel the Hayabusa. Do we need a 300 mile an hour street bike? No. I mean, there was no need for a motorcycle on a public ride, on a public road to go that fast. Pretty much, I think we've seen the end of the speed wars. Turns out 306 kilometers an hour is too fast for some people. Politicians were beginning you know, to grow afraid of this, uh, this competition for speed. Had Suzuki gone too far with the Hayabusa, would people actually attempt to try and reach the speedometer's optimistic reading of 300 kilometers an hour? Manufacturers were beginning uh, to fear the consequences of their need for speed. Nervous regulators were beginning to have conversations about limiting horsepower to 200 and perhaps preventing the import of motorcycles that went unnecessarily fast. And the research, even that was in favor of banning super crotch rockets because obviously speed was a contributor to fatal crashes. This competition for speed was beginning to look like a liability for, for riders, for manufacturers and for regulators. And so began the big unspoken agreement amongst the motorcycle manufacturers to limit their motorcycles to 300 kilometers an hour. And it was an unofficial meeting or some big announcement, but it was clear that no manufacturers were willing to cross that 300 threshold. For example, in 2001, all the high uses were limited to 300. Honda announced it wouldn't be creating any motorcycles that surpass 300 kilometers an hour. Even Kawasaki's Hayabusa killer, the ZX-12R, did a measly 301 kilometers an hour. The Hayabusa had ended a century-long battle for building the fastest motorcycle you could. And this makes the Hayabusa one of the most significant motorcycles in history. For the next decade, Suzuki's 1999 unrestricted Hayabusa remained the fastest production motorcycle in the world. The most recent model released earlier this year remains largely unchanged from the 1999 model. And no one can blame Suzuki because it's a damn near perfect recipe. Even the looks which were once, you know, disgusting and revolting are now still disgusting and revolting, but it's almost iconic now. It's unique and it's distinct and it's really hard to replicate. And apparently that's what the designers meant to do with this motorcycle. And if that's what they meant to do, then they succeeded because man, nothing looks like a Hayabusa. Sure, the Hayabusa is no longer the fastest motorcycle today, but no one really cares anymore because that battle is over and Suzuki won at a time when it actually mattered.